Equality campaigners are celebrating tonight after the Scottish Government announced it would introduce marriage rights for same-sex couples. The Deputy First Minister said legalising gay marriage was the right thing to do. But tonight, many faith groups remain deeply opposed. It comes as the new Archbishop of Glasgow was forced to apologise over comments he reportedly made about the premature death of a gay Labour MP. Here's our chief reporter, David Cowan. This announcement will mean a great deal to a great many people. Nathan and Robert Gale plan to turn their civil partnership into a marriage. I've always described Robert as my husband and we've always talked about our, our marriage and our wedding, but really it's not been that, it's been a civil partnership. And that's, you know, it's something different. So to, for it really to be a wedding now and a marriage is, you know, it's fantastic, it's really exciting. And it will mean a great deal to the many who fought the proposal. The Coalition for Marriage called today's move aggressively anti-religion. Church of Scotland and the Catholic Church remain firmly opposed. We're particularly concerned for wider society. For example, teachers in classrooms who don't want to teach that same-sex marriage is normal. We've seen cases in England where a teacher was sacked for refusing to read out a same-sex storybook to children. We don't want that to happen here. What happens to social workers, civil registrars? It's eight years now since civil partnerships were introduced in Scotland. Two-thirds of those who responded to the consultation on allowing same-sex marriage were against it. But the government believes it has the support of Parliament and the majority of Scottish people. It says no church or celebrant will be compelled to conduct same-sex marriages and nothing will stop people such as teachers from expressing their opposition. We believe that it's right uh, in a modern, inclusive, tolerant society to allow uh, loving couples to commit to each other through marriage. But we also uh, deeply respect principles of freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And our intention to legislate to allow same-sex marriage will be accompanied uh, by important protections for those principles. Campaigners say allowing same-sex couples to marry is a milestone in the fight for gay rights. Once this is done, you know, there will be pretty much legal equality for lesbian, gay and bisexual people. And that will be an overwhelming difference to where we were 30 years ago. The opposition won't give up without a fight, but legislation could be brought forward next year, with the first same-sex marriage taking place in Scotland in 2015. David Cowan, STV News. Well, live now to our political editor, Bernard Ponsonby. Bernard, some campaigners thought the government was wobbling on the issue, but a clear-cut statement today. Yes, indeed. I always thought when the government embarked upon this consultation that this was always going to be the end game. This was always where the government were going to end up. At the end of the day, there is a massive disconnect between church and politics. Church leaders, Catholic leaders and some other Christian leaders look at this as an issue of morality, as an issue of right and wrong. Politicians don't start from an issue of theology. They start from the issue of what's good for society and they look at this issue as an issue of dignity, an issue of equality, an issue of civil liberties and the society in which they want to try and create. And frankly, on this issue, as on other issues, the church have made their stand on this one, on civil partnerships, on an equal age of consent, on gay adoption. They've fought and they're lost. And I suspect when this issue goes before the Scots Parliament, over 100 of the 129 MSPs will end up voting in favour of this. The division within society may well be narrower, but what this tells us is that the disconnect between church and politics is simply unbridgeable. Well, more from Bernard later, because today's announcement follows controversial comments from the incoming Archbishop of Glasgow. Philip Tartaglia is accused of linking the premature death of politician David Keynes with his sexuality. The late MP's partner described it as upsetting and painful. Karen Greenshields reports. There's recently in Scotland, there was a, a, a gay Catholic MP died at the age of 44 or so. Nobody said anything. Uh, and why his body should just shut down at that age. And uh, I mean, I, I, it, obviously he could have had, uh, you know, a disease that would have killed anybody, but, um, you know, th th you seem to hear so many stories about this kind of thing. There's no other way of interpreting the comments other than that Archbishop Tartaglia is suggesting David Cairn's early death might have been connected to his sexuality. And he may not refer to the late MP by name, but the gay politician's loved ones have reacted angrily, accusing him of painful ignorance. He knows nothing about David's medical history. He knows nothing about David's personal life. 
He knows nothing about the career of public service that David had. And I think to make these comments is not only deeply distressing and painful to me and to David's family, but I think also reveals an ignorance um, w w which, which the Archbishop needs to recognise and needs to show some contrition for. The Archbishop's comments were made during a question and answer session following a lecture on religious freedom at Oxford University. Today, the leader of the opposition said his comments were wrong. David Cairns was a, was a fantastic person and I think that uh, there's obviously been some hurt caused for totally understandable reasons to his family and indeed his friends. And uh, I, I think the Archbishop, when he understands the full the, the circumstances of David Cairns' death, will, I'm sure, uh, as he's apparently been saying, regret those comments. The Catholic Church has apologised on behalf of the new Archbishop of Glasgow, saying the comments were taken out of context. He is sorry for any hurt which has resulted. There was certainly no offence or judgment intended in his words. We created the Scottish Parliament. We protected the Scottish Parliament. His the politician who died from acute pancreatitis at the age of 44 was a devout Catholic and the first former priest to sit in Parliament. The new Archbishop of Glasgow knew David Cairns and was personally involved in his funeral arrangements. Yesterday, Archbishop Tartaglia said he feared prosecution for stating the Catholic Church's opposition to same-sex marriage. Today, his off-the-cuff comments about sexuality have come back to haunt him. Loose language may not be a criminal offence, but it certainly resulted in a bad day at the office. And that's an office which the Archbishop doesn't officially take up until September. Karen Greenshields, STV News. Well, back now to Bernard. So, Bernard, how significant Ed Miliband's intervention today? Well, normally politicians don't like to get into spats with church leaders and churches in general. And when I went along to see Ed Miliband uh, late this morning, I thought he might have diplomatically sidestepped this issue. But he didn't. He was critical of the archbishop and he was unambiguous in his language. Language, in a sense, that is also what this issue is about. It's not whether or not Philip Tartaglia's uh, comments were simply homophobic, but it was the language which he used. And I think that one of the things that the Archbishop-to-be is going to discover is that as a civic leader, absolutely everything he says will be picked over and analysed and perhaps even overanalyzed. And, you know, it was a predecessor of his as Archbishop Thomas Winning, who later became a cardinal, who during the Section 28 furore described homosexuality as a perversion, and that got him into a lot of bother. Alex Salmond was saying the other week that in issues like this, whether you're a political leader or a spiritual leader, you have to choose your words carefully, something that uh, Philip Tartaglia may well be reflecting on tonight. OK, Bernard, thank you very much indeed for that.